There are a lot of challenges with accurately testing the thermal output of cases, coolers, GPUs, and CPUs, and getting a measurement that from product to product is actually representative of the real world performance without some kind of variance within the results that may actually invalidate some of the differences shown in charts. And I am now confident in saying that I think we have one of the most accurate and best testing methodologies for thermals on the media side of the industry. And the reason I am able to say that with such excitement and confidence is because we just validated our own testing methodology in a real thermal chamber. Several thousand dollars this thing we got access to through a friend and we're able to use this to see if our results are actually accurate within a 100% controlled environment. So this is something that was pretty unique to us. It was a new experience with validating our thermal testing methodology and that's equal parts nerve wracking and exciting because obviously on the one end you could find out that oh everything we've been doing is questionable but we were very happy to see that the results from the thermal chamber and our everyday lab setup are actually almost directly identical with the CPU load to load tests and the idle to idle tests and the GPU tests they are right on the dot in terms of accuracy between each environment. So I wanna explain how this all works because it was pretty cool. And I think that the enthusiasts in the crowd might enjoy this type of thing. So first of all, if you are not familiar with thermal chambers, a thermal chamber is, they vary in size, they vary in climate controllability. Some of them have humidity controls that you can directly access. Some of them are just temperature controls. And the whole point of a thermal chamber is to contain your test environment and create constants. You know exactly where the intake is, you know exactly where the exhaust is in the system. They're often very low powered fans, so there's really no reasonable impact on test results if you have a good one. And for setups like the one we use, there's actually a lot of extra thermocouples built into the chamber, so we can position those all over the place and figure out exactly what is the temperature of the intake in front of the intake fan, what's the temperature behind the intake fan, what's the temperature of the exhaust, What's the temperature of the CPU if you placed one of these things between the cold plate and the IHS? All of this stuff we're able to collect data for and validate our testing methodology. Now having years of experience testing cases, I can very directly speak to the level of variance that you can see in an environment if you're not well trained and you don't have a solid bulletproof methodology for making sure that the tests are accurate from day to day even or from case to case or from season to season. There's a lot of stuff that changes even in a controlled house and these are only loosely controlled. Any kind of office or house that's on an open loop HVAC system or heating and air conditioning system is going to have variance in the test results and that needs to be accounted for by producing delta values. We use things like this, which I'll explain in a moment, to make sure our accurate readings are achievable by basically measuring ambient constantly and checking that against whatever the diode temperatures are, and I'll explain that more momentarily. So a couple of concerns and challenges with the test engineering of methodology in a non-chamber environment like this, where we do our testing, is you've got to control where your case is or device. It has to be in the same freaking spot every time and I know it sounds sort of insane that you need it in the exact same spot from product to product but it's really it's true because if you do move the thing the ambient over there might be cooler or warmer than the ambient over there and that might change based on the season this is the wall that's external so it's near a window and if I put the case over there and I've tested this with our internal testing the result might be that there's actually a slight few degree even one to two warmer temperature when it's the summer when the sun is hitting the wall or when it's winter or it might just be different because there's a vent in the ceiling over there and if you don't position the case correctly with the intake fan in the exact same spot every time that intake or or whatever it is heating or air coming from the ceiling will impact your results it's not a could it is not a subjunctive thing it will impact the results and i've tested that several times at least in this environment. So these are all very big concerns and the way to deal with it that we've done is by taking something like this which is a very accurate basically digital thermometer that has thermocouples linked out of it can fit a few of them in here and we measure every second the ambient temperature in specific spots like in front of the intake fan of the case will occasionally do measurements of things like the exhaust, the output of the case, what does it measure immediately outside of the rear exhaust fan, 
What does it measure within the case between the intake and the GPU? And you can do all these different measurements and get pretty accurate, or actually, well, really within uh, 0.1 Celsius resolution results of the temperature of wherever that particular thermocouple is. And we use K-type thermocouples, so they're, they're rated, at least the ones we use, are rated for 800 degrees Celsius. So that helps make sure that these environments remain accurate. So what you do, or what we do, I should say, is we take a reading of the ambient, we take a reading of the diode using some software, normally 8064, and we subtract the ambient from the diode to create a delta. That delta value shows you the difference, the, the change from case to case instead of using an absolute temperature. If it is 21 degrees Celsius in here today, and it's 20.5 Celsius in here tomorrow, for whatever reason, maybe the AC turned on a few minutes into the test or something, you need to account for that. And the only way to account for that is with something like this. Now, for testers and sites or YouTube channels that just check their thermostat and see what the thermostat says, that's not good enough. And that, believe me, that is nowhere near good enough. First of all, the thermostat's probe might be in the hallway where the thermostat is. That's not the temperature of this room. That is actually several degrees different from this room. And our other lab, our main lab, where all the production and video rendering happens, that's got hot computers in it, it's got other electronics in it. That room measures that, I don't know what the Celsius reading is, measures that about 84 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on how much work is going on. Here, it'll measure at maybe 68, max 70 Fahrenheit. And in the hallway, it might be 67. So this is all stuff that you, you can't just take a reading from a thermostat and think it's going to be accurate for a delta value in a case test. And that's why we introduced these different thermocouples and stuff we've worked on with Silverstone, we worked on with Corsair, with NZXT, all these companies. We've talked to them for years now to say, hey, what are the big problems that we should look for in case testing? What do you guys have trouble with internally? What do you have trouble with externally with media outlets that you think maybe aren't doing it 100% correctly or are doing it correctly? And how do we improve our testing? So we did all this, we talked a lot, sent back and forth ideas and came up with the methodology we use today, which I, I'm not gonna reveal fully on camera, but I'll give you the overview of things to sort of share insight as to why our tests are accurate. So first of all, what were the actual results within the thermal chamber that we tested in, which again, I, I think they're $10,000 the one we were using, which is really not bad for a thermal chamber, but certainly not something that I can just throw down and put up in the corner of a room somewhere. So the one we used, again, was accessed through a contact of mine, several thousand dollars, very closely controlled. And the results for that, I'm showing you a chart right now, there should be a chart on the screen. The results for that are almost identical. So for the stock test on the Kublai KL05 Silverstone case, we saw a difference of about 0 0.07 degrees Celsius from the lab test here and the test in the thermal chamber. That's a very good thing. That means that after we subtracted the, the ambient temperature for this lab and for the thermal chamber, we saw an, a readout that had a resolution of, a, it was a 0.1 Celsius reading margin of error with the devices. We saw a readout that had a 0 0.07 Celsius difference between the values. So I, basically the same for all intents and purposes. Now with our next test with the bottom intake, we saw one, I think it was 0 0.046 Celsius. Again, so close. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's really exciting how close the results were. And then the biggest difference we saw was 0.225. So that was a bit larger than the other two, but still pretty damn small difference between the two. And I did come up with a reason why that happened. We had some access to other tools. We used thermocouples in different cases or uh, situations, spaces within the thermal chamber to figure out why that happened just slightly different from the other two. And it was because the, I, I had installed a rear exhaust fan, didn't have one stock. I installed a rear exhaust fan that was spitting heat into the wall, which was a couple inches away, three inches away. So spitting heat into the thermal chamber wall, and then that heat was recirculating back into the bottom, getting sucked in below the GPU. And that caused a very, very slight increase in temperature from one test to the next. So that's sort of how we validated everything at a top level. And there's a lot more concerns too. So when designing these test cases, we look at everything. How close is the wall to the case? 
Is the exhaust facing the wall or is it facing away? Where are the vents in the ceiling and the floor? Where is the case positioned exactly in the room? What is the surface of that the case is sitting on? What's the material? Does the table run cooler or warmer than ambient on average, depending on what kind of material it is? Should almost always be cooler uh, if you're in the winter anyway. That's what we, we've experienced. And in the summer, you may experience warmer. It just depends on sort of where the windows are. Basically, there's a million things that can change within a non-controlled thermal chamber environment and the way we account for those so like i said this sits there measuring ambient every second and then we have the diodes measuring ambient every second we take this data remove it from that and then we have a delta value which gives us accurate results based on this thermal chamber test so uh, the whole point of this we use a couple different tools we use one of these as well this is a laser you point it at different surfaces you get a thermal readout I can see the table in front of me right now is 17.1 degrees Celsius. And uh, using this device, if I had a thermal couple plugged in, which I'll go ahead and do right now, we will see that the ambient temperature of this room is 19.3 degrees Celsius where I'm standing right here. And that's 17.1 on the table. So you can see just how much the, the temperature can change from object to object, from location of the room, one to the other. So right now we're at, let's see here, we are at 18.7, now that it's had a moment to calibrate. I'm gonna put it in front of this light here. And now we are at 19.2, and that's an LED light, so that's pretty cool, but you can just see how much things can change. And if you're testing cases, these are products that often maybe have a degree of difference between them, if that. So obviously you've got some margin of error built in, and that will help you figure out, is there a significant difference between two results, one case to the next? If they're zero point, maybe 0 0.05, 0 0.07 degrees apart, then we know that it's actually almost within margin of error where they could effectively be the same. And in terms of practical use, they are the same because your CPU and your GPU don't care that much about one degree. But within the world of cooling, it's also a unique challenge for these manufacturers because cooling is the type of thing with computers anyway, where Asatex and Coolits and all these Apaltex all these companies of the world, they are trying to compete with one another for maybe one degree at a time. It's a big deal if you can drop your temperatures by one degree Celsius. So that's why this accurate testing is useful because even though it's practically not that different, we can still see what is the absolute best product in each category within a slight margin of error built in there. What is the best product? We can rank them in a hierarchy and then we can talk about it in the article and in the videos. Hey, how does this impact you practically? And sometimes there's a pretty damn big difference. So if you have one case, it might be, uh, we tested the Revolt 2. Revolt 2 was, what was it? I think it was almost 30 degrees Celsius, I wanna say, warmer on the 980Ti hybrid GPU than when we tested it on an open bench. So that is a giant difference. And that just shows why the accurate testing is important for finding those types of things. Now, other tools we use, we do use multimeters as well. This is a bit more involved than probably a, a lot of sites think is necessary, but I do it just as a precaution. So this is especially something we do for testing fan controllers. And that's because fan controllers, if they're cheap, they don't output a constant voltage. They might fluctuate even from something like 11 to 12 volts on the, the high speed settings. And that's a pretty fair fluctuation that will drop your RPM a good bit. So we use multimeters to sit there and read out with probes uh, during testing or after testing, whatever, read out what is the voltage throughput, what's the, the current and all that stuff. And uh, that's something that we use to help validate as well. We use this to check the temperature in a, in a couple different spots, these spot checks. And then we use this for ambient, put it on a spreadsheet, do a bit of work there, crunch the numbers and come out with the charts that you all have become familiar with. So that was the adventure of testing all this stuff in a thermal chamber. Some of the photos should have gone through during this time. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy to see that the testing methodology is accurate, that it's sound. And next we are working on DB testing, so noise testing. I've said this many times, actually in every article about cases lately, and it's for good reason. So we don't currently test noise. And that's because it's really hard to test noise. You need to know some math about how the decibel levels work. You need to know some math about the deltas. And it's logarithmic. It's not just a simple subtraction formula. If you add more fans, it's a logarithmic change in the noise output. 
So that's my next goal is to start adding DB testing. We're gonna buy some expensive equipment after we talk to a couple of manufacturers, figure out what's what's good for our purposes. I'm not gonna go build a half a million dollar anechoic chamber. That's just absurd, frankly. Uh, I just wanna do the best test we possibly can within a realistic, real world, everyday environment. And uh, hopefully over the next few months, figure out a methodology that is so accurate and reproducible that we know definitively from case to case, GPU to GPU, which one's quieter, and even if that's in a somewhat relative setting. So I, I'm not building any anechoic chambers. I do have access to them, and we're gonna be validating our methodology in those as well when the time comes. So I will be able to use those zero dB noise floor anechoic chambers and figure out if we set up a case in here, how loud is it, and know absolutely how loud it is, and then set it up in a lab environment, in our lab, this one, and figure out, okay, what's our noise floor? How loud is the case here? And how do we compute that delta to figure out one to the next, what's louder? Especially because things like uh, noise can change on a day-to-day -day basis. You, there's all a million more concerns there. Does your air conditioning turn on? That's a noise increase. Is there a train going by? Is there a plane? Is a car on the street driving by? All kinds of small things can impact noise testing. It is a nightmare to get into and do accurately. But now that we've conquered thermal, at least to some degree, I'm not gonna say we're the best at thermal dynamics there is because that's not really what we do. We're not thermal engineers, just test engineers. So uh, I, I am pretty confident that we've basically conquered that problem in terms of measuring thermal, I will say that. But DB is next and that's gonna be a, a very big challenge, but I'm excited to tackle it. And for anyone who wants to help us in all this stuff, it is expensive to do, so I, you know, there's sponsors, that definitely helps. And then we've got Patreon linked in the post video or in the, the description below if you wanna help us out directly. But other than that, just watch the content. If you like it, then great. Please comment, stuff like that. All the usual YouTube BS people spew, you know, like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> whatever. It actually does help. But thank you for watching the discussion on how this stuff works and the behind the scenes of what we're doing to make sure our tests are accurate and not just, I frankly, excuse it, but not just bullshit that people post up with some kind of half-assed, you know, check the thermostat and subtract that, or even worse, just post absolute values where you might have a temperature fluctuation. I mean, we've, with this thing, let's see what it is now. Uh, it is now, uh, it's now 19.1 here. And here a minute ago, it was, uh, I think it went from 18.3 at one point to 19.1 over there. It's like 19.2 and that has increased as well. So just standing here has increased the uh, heat of the room, the lights, and uh, you know, I, the point is that there's gotta be some kind of science behind how you account for that. And that's what we do, and that's what we do pretty well. So thank you for watching. I will hopefully see you in the next video where we talk about some more product stuff and news. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time, thanks.